Okay, the website I'm going to show you today is Prop Offers. Now, this is a pretty popular site in the RIO industry, so quite a few customers use it. So the chances are good at some point you or your agent um, will be putting an offer through the system. So I'm going to show you kind of example of one offer we're negotiating right now, and you can kind of see how it works and what information they're asking for. So this particular property right here, we've gone back and forth with about four or five counters and we finally just got to the very last one where the seller basically said, this is our lowest price. We're going, you know, as is, take it or leave it. So we're about to reject the offer, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like from an agent standpoint on the back end. Now, they're gonna ask for really, you know, typical information. If you're buying it in your, you know, company name, it's gonna ask for LLC information. If you are buying as an LLC, make sure you have your LLC documents ready. The title company is going to need them. The servicer or seller might want them before they sign the contract on some cases. Um, so just fill out you know, the name, very simple. Down here, you're gonna find out, or you're gonna tell it what type of buyer. So you've got several different options. Typically, it's either gonna be an investor or an occupant. I mean, that's one of the two. Um, the other ones typically aren't gonna apply. Maybe it's a second home. Um, but investor or owner occupant is going to generally be the case. Now, this is really important too. Did buyer physically visit the property? There are so many people buying from out of town right now that so many investors aren't physically seeing the property. They're buying them sight unseen. And a lot of clients want to know because if you haven't seen the property, they know the chances of it falling out are a lot higher. Doesn't mean they're not going to accept the deal but a lot of these seller platforms are going to ask if the buyer has seen the property has physically been in the property if you're financing you're going to enter all the lender information here you would have a pre-qual letter this is cash so our proof of funds is yes now this right here pay attention home sale contingency ours is no if you flag yes to this i can almost guarantee your offer is not going to be accepted um, I'm not even sure why they put this on an REO, but I've never seen an REO accepted with a home sale contingency. Just I've never in my 20 years ever seen them take that. So if you flag that as yes, you can just about guarantee your offer's toast. And here you got agent information. Um, whatever your info is here, you're going to put it all in here. Um, this is really important also. Dual agency office, no. Meaning, are you working in the same office as the listing agent? No. Agent related to buyer? No. Um, if these are flagged yes, you might run into problems. Uh, it might mean upper management has to approve it or something like that. So just pay attention to these questions. Now here you're going to see a good example of how these systems require contract packages to be uploaded before they can be submitted. This in particular, and it's telling you right here what they want in a single file purchase contract, copy of the earnest money check or the bank wire for the EMD and the proof of funds or prequal letter. They want all three of these things uploaded in one PDF into the system. You cannot submit the offer. You cannot hit the submit button until this is uploaded. Okay, so let me get in here and show you a couple of things. So we start over here. Okay, this property is listed for $179.9. Our first offer was $157. Okay, we got a $15,000 EMD. Remember, bigger EMDs will get you more deals. Okay, they love big EMDs or down payments, um, earnest money deposits. The bigger, the better when it comes to foreclosures. Um, really, all the information is down here is really nothing. It's a cash deal, so we're not asking for anything from the seller. Um, we even have, where is it? Uh, da -da -da -da. Inspection days are zero. Um, so this contract is being written with no contingencies whatsoever, strictly cash with a $15,000 EMD payment. So the seller came back, they counted at 179. We came back and we bumped to 162. They came down to 173. So we got them almost $7,000 off their asking price. Uh, but this investor just can't go any higher. Property's really not worth it, not for a flip. So he came up to 162.5, then they must have got another offer because they call for highest and best. So I'm assuming they got another offer in the system. When that happens, they immediately kick it out for highest and best. So we came back and the investor up to 163, and that's his final offer. 
Now you can see down here, I put some comments to hopefully the asset manager would read them and you know just kind of review and see what you know we're talking about. Um, and they did read them because you'll see right here, they put seller's lowest and best. Price reflects the condition. I don't agree with that. Um, it really doesn't, not accurately, not for the market, but point is the asset manager read the note and they see it. So we got this property down from 179.9 down to 170. That's almost 10,000. That's not bad. But this property hasn't had a price reduction. So that should really change things, um, in my opinion, because they're due for a price reduction. So you'll hear me talk about this a lot. With REOs and once they hit the MLS, they're all based on the list price, okay? Uh, and that's huge because a lot of times we have to wait for price reductions. We just need a price reduction to hit and let them drop it, then they might be able to accept our lower offer. But at the current price, they can't. It's all based on the list price, and that's very, very important. Oh, I wanna show you these quick little notes down here at the bottom. Uh, if multiple offers are presented, highest and best offers may be requested by all buyers. Now, they're typically gonna do that. I mean, 99% of the time, that's exactly what they're gonna do. If highest and best offers are requested, any and all prior seller counters will be considered withdrawn. Basically, if they request highest and best, everything in the past is thrown out the window. Seller reserves the right to accept an offer regardless of the date of its receipt and may accept or reject any offer at its sole discretion. Basically, it's their property, their rules, and take them or leave them. An offer shall be considered accepted by seller only upon the execution of all parties of the final contract documents. Remember, this is very important. Even though they've accepted the offer or they accept it through the computer system and it's taken off the market or it's removed from any other offers being placed on it, it's still not considered a fully accepted offer until all parties have signed the contract. You need a fully executed contract and that's very remember, I mean very important to remember. You don't have really anything guaranteed until you get that signed contract from the seller. I hope this helps uh, explain and show you kind of example of what goes on behind the scenes. Just remember your agent has to have your proof of funds uh, or prequal letter. If you're looking, buying, or in the process, have that ready. If you're buying in an LLC, have those LLC documents ready. Very, very important, and it'll save you a lot of headaches down the road. As always, I appreciate it. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Um, gonna be having a lot more content coming out soon. Appreciate it, thanks.